Hello everybody, it's me Brandy. I'm back again today to share with you guys some of my current whips and finished object without an S. Singular, finished object. I have one finished object today to share with you guys. And it is a knit project and you guys may have remember this one from being on my um, previous whip videos. This is another sock head beanie, sock head hat. This is a free pattern available on Ravelry. I made this with some cascade yarn, sock weight yarn of course, and it just kind of fades. I really wish that we could just really get the beauty of this colorway a little bit better, but it is what it is. And as you guys know, I love these beanies. I did recently chop all my hair off because I decided that I'm just going to quit dyeing it and see what happens when we see all the white hair that I have. But even so, my hair is very thick and curly and it just doesn't look good in a regular fitted beanie. So I really like these slouch beanies because I can, well now I can just put my hair in a very low little ponytail bun type thing and just tuck it right in because this has a nice little slouchy back. You guys, if you go through any of my past videos, you'll see that my little poother just fits right in there perfectly and I can have a cute hat situation. And I like these because they're not too heavy, but they do provide nice warmth. I usually always, well, I do um, always make, when I make the sock weight versions, um, I use um, yarn that has wool. So that adds that extra layer of warmth, right? So I really love these sock head beanies. I will be placing a link to the pattern for free, like I said, in my description box below. So if you're interested in that, you can definitely download it. And I will say, I have amended that pattern for different weights of yarn um, and just go by the measurements, basically. Um, I did do, I am working currently on, and I will show you, um, my fire pit mitts, another pair of fire pit mitts that I cast on for me specifically. And um, it is a worsted weight yarn, and I. Just kind of finagled and I know like for a lot of worsted weight patterns I'm gonna pat I'm gonna cast on a right around 80 ish stitches so I just looked at my sock head beanie which obviously you're when you're using sock weight yarn you're casting on a lot of stitches 100 130 140 just depending on whatever your size is it's in the pattern but for worsted weight, I know I usually would cast on 80 some odd stitches. So I just looked at the, I just look at the stitch count and I'm like, okay, it needs to be multiples of four. So I'll do 88 or whatever. And then I just follow the pattern. What's nice about this pattern is it doesn't say, you know, knit a certain amount of rows. It says knit ribbing for a certain amount of inches. Knit the body for this amount of inches. Start the decrease. And it tells you how to do it but so you can amend it for different weights of yarn since it is done by measurements and not by rows does that make sense i hope so anyways i'll show you guys those knits here very soon because they're part of my works in progress if you um viewed my previous videos you will know that I have decided to implement WhipGo for my projects so that I can get stuff done and get my hands on some things that I have forgotten about and put aside and haven't yet finished. So it's just a way for me to get things going. So if you need to remember or need to remember, if you need to know more about that, just look at my previous video from yesterday or even I've been talking about this for the last couple of videos. So I'm going to set this here and we're going to go on to my first work in progress that is 
on my whip go this week and it is the boneyard shawl by Stephen West and man I've really been getting busy on it I wish I could really stretch it out and show it to you guys but I can't because my cord is just not long enough but it's a triangular shaped shawl this is where it starts with a garter tab cast on and then it's just rows of stockinette and you bring in a garter row every so often to help break that up a little bit maybe what I can do so we can see one side of the shawl right maybe maybe from one point forward I don't know the triangular is getting much bigger so I cannot stretch it all the way out but it's so beautiful this is an ice yarns that I picked up it is the favorite magic is what it's called it's a worsted weight yarn and I have four skeins of it I'm almost done with this first skein now that we are in the bigger part of the triangle you know you go through a skein so fast because you're going one row can take half a skein of yarn it seems like but I do have four skeins of this so I'm just going to continue until it's as big as I want it I figure I want the top edge of the triangle let me pull that down a little bit so this edge right here I need it to be right now it is now we cannot we just cannot see so if we did that and we bring it I can just gonna have to measure it basically but right now if I have my arm straight out because I want to be able to hold the edge and I want it to be a, at least a full wingspan for me that's how I like my shawls to be so I will grab it like this and when I hold it like this and I bring it and this center part is more here then I'll know that this shawl is big enough for me because I like a I like a big shawl that I can really wrap up in if I'm going to take the time to make one I want it to be something that I'm going to wear and wear frequently. I made the mistake when I first started learning to crochet and knit and do all the things that I would make things um, the way a pattern said to do it or maybe the way someone else did it and then I would put them on and I wouldn't enjoy them and I wouldn't wear them because I just didn't want to have it like a little ascot scarf thing. <laughs> I want it to be big and cozy and then I know that I'm going to use it a lot. Um, right here is my Andrea Mallory's night shift shawl and that's a pattern it's okay sized but it's not enough for me so I knew that in advance and I did additional repeats so I like a pattern like this one where you can go and go and go until you get exactly what you want um, so that's what's nice about this pattern as I said this is a Stephen West pattern it is a free pattern and he does have a tutorial here on Facebook or on Facebook on YouTube and I will put a link in the description box directly to that tutorial so if you want to give it a shot you can walk right through it with Mr. Stephen he can help you with that okay of course well yep of course I wouldn't have everything at hand I would have to not have one thing at least at hand so I'm going to stand up sorry I'm going to stand up and see if hopefully I have my other project my other whip go project here we go let's see there's some pads I just have sitting so we'll hope that one of these is it I believe it's this one yes wonderful wunderbar so in a previous video you guys had seen i have shown this in a previous whip video that i was making myself another pair of the knit fire pit mitts this is a paid pattern by fiber for the people i believe 
I, again, I will put a link below in the description in case you're interested in purchasing this pattern. I like it. It is what I would call a vanilla fingerless knit pattern. There are actually two versions in the pattern, multiple sizes. This is the just the simple non-tapered version. There's also a more, there's a tapered version for if you want a very fitted but I find that I really enjoy just the plain, easy version. I like this because you literally cast on a number of stitches, knitting around till you get to the thumb, do your little thumb gusset, join it, and then finish off knitting in the round. And it's just stocking that stitch with a rolled top and bottom, which is nice. You don't you're never never having to do purl stitches or anything, no ribbing, nothing. I love this pattern. I think it's great. I've made several pairs. So that one I had completed previously. And because I drew this as a whip go this week, I had to cast on. So I have cast on for my second knit and I am up to the place where I'm going to do this thumb gusset now. And man i'll tell you what once this thumb gusset is done this i mean i've got this much left on the whole this was two hours and that wasn't two hours hard work that was two hours of me pilfering watching shows pausing getting up sitting down you know how it is sometimes so because i didn't want to do this project that's why it's been sitting forever but i want it finished so i'm glad that it came up on whip go i'm gonna have this finished my whip go is goals. Once I draw two numbers a week and I work on those two projects, I have to put five hours into each of those projects in the week's time. So I've put two hours in on this. It is, what is today? Thursday. It's Thursday. So I have Thursday, Friday, and Saturday to get three more hours in. I don't have three hours left on this. This is going to be done in about an hour and a half to two hours. It'll be finished. So, yay, yay, whip go. Getting things done, getting things done. So, that is my other one. And I think what I'm going to do, because that's only going to take an hour to an hour and a half in the same bag with this, I do have the ones that I made for my mother. Um... And, you know, Mother's, her birthday's coming up on February 9th. February 9th. Real quick, next week. So what I think is, can you believe it's February 1st, guys? What I think I'm going to do, let me get that up there. All I have to do on hers is the little teeny, you know, few rows of thumb stitching. And that hers are done. And I can mail them out to her. So... Because I still have three hours left to dedicate to that, and that's only going to take me an hour and a half or so, I'm going to use the additional time to get her thumbs put on there and mail her her beautiful charcoal wool fingerless mitts because she is one of those people who wears black, 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 black. And I told her, I said, I'm not doing any more black stuff for you. <laughs> I would do it, but this I felt was a little better. It's a charcoal, like I say, it's a charcoal gray. So she'll accept that and she'll be happy for it because she's knit worthy. So that will be done, done, done. And in the mail ASAP. Now that is everything for my whip go and what I worked on outside of whip go, I was working on something else. I did not bring my half and half triangle shawl in here to show you guys because even though I've worked on it, it's just not that noticeable. And how many times do you guys want to see me all that big dude out and show it to you? Um, I can tell you that I'm on the second triangle and I'm at the point where you start with one stitch and then you wrap and turn and resolve. And then you go back and you do the second stitch, wrap, turn, and resolve. Third, fourth, keep going back and forth all the way down. There's 260 stitches. I have finally hit where I have completed 
100. So 160 more wrap and turns, guys, and it will be done. And I will say yay. I don't know if I'll ever make another one or not. I don't know. But the other thing that I have been working on is I had spoken to you guys when I showed you my completed wild oleander hooded scarf is what that pattern was called. I told you that I wanted to make a, a ver my own version and I was going to call it, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to call it later. But I wanted a granny, I wanted a granny version, right? Because I like granny. Look, this is my granny, my three quarter sleeve granny oversized kind of big and oversized you can't see what I'm doing down here but it's a little longer I shouldn't have made it as long as I did but it's cozy and it's nice but grab this I'm not quite yet done with it but I'm very close we are so close to being done but I want to show you guys what I've got so far okay So this is a granny version. It's gonna bring it up, 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 up. Obviously, I haven't sewn in anything because it's a work in project. Progress. It's still a work in progress. I'm almost done. I need to do about ten more rows on this neck. So I'm just gonna slip this on. Just so you guys can see what we got going on here and now. Yeah, still got another 10 rows on that hooded cowl part of this. So it's pretty similar in size and dimensions at this point to the other one that I made. Just obviously got to get, this is pulling, um, you can see my head back here. This. This cowl is not long enough, but like I say, another 10, 12 rows or so ought to get it to where I want it. But this is the, this is the idea. And I'm trying to decide, you guys tell me, what do y'all think? Do we want fringe on this one or no fringe? I have not yet decided. I don't know. I thought about maybe doing a pico border on the edge, but I did really love the fringe on the other one that I made. So I don't know. You guys tell me. What do you think? And if all goes well, which it feels that it is going well to me, I'm at a point right now where I'm fixing to go down um, a hook size just to finish this last third or so of this hooded cowl part of it um, just to help bring it in a little bit because I like it to be a little I'm not decreasing stitches to tape or anything but I am going making my hook size smaller consecutively so that it kind of has a little more firmness to it. It's not so floppy at the top there. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, so that's where we're at on that. I'm feeling pretty good about what I've got done this week and how things are going. I'm getting my life more organized and that makes me really happy. The whip go thing is going great because it's allowing me to lay hands on my cross stitch projects and on my fiber arts projects. I feel like I'm going to get so much more done. So there's some order in this chaos that is part of the fun of being artistic and crafty, right? If it's very rigid, I don't enjoy it. So I'm getting a little bit of organization happening with the whip go, but I'm still having the freedom of variety and playing with new things and starting new things if I want and doing all the things that I want to do. Um, so it's kind of the best of both worlds for me. And like I said, I do go over that more in my previous video um, about WIPGO. Um, but I'm also, I'm feeling pretty good. I've noticed that I've always wanted to be, I want to be a schedule person, but I really have found 
that when I sit down and I write out a schedule that's like, wake up at 6.30, 6.30 to 7, drink coffee, check email, 7 to 8, go for a walk, you know, like, if I do that, where I have time set for everything, I inevitably fail. And I usually do it pretty quick because I get off. At one day, I'm definitely going to get off one day, and then I feel like, oh, I, I'm not doing it. I'm no good at this. I can't do it. But I decided, and it just occurred to me, and I thought, geez, Wiz, you are 47 years old. Why are you just now figuring this out? I get, I wrote myself a schedule, but it doesn't have times on it. It's just do it in this order, and that is working so good for me. So now it's like, wake up. Okay. It doesn't matter if it's a Monday or a Saturday. It's wake up when I wake up. When I wake up is when I'm getting up. I usually wake up right at seven o'clock. Actually, I usually wake up at six, take my thyroid medicine, and then go back to sleep for one hour. But um, anyways, wake up, have coffee. I'm alive, basically. Um, chores. Chores is all the things that I want to do around my house that day. After that, get ready for the day. After that, do YouTube video. After that, have time, free time for crafting. So there's no times attached to this is my whole point. And it's working great because I'm not thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I'm behind. I'm behind. I should have done this, 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 and that. I failed. Like it's over. I ruined it. Just forget the whole thing because I do that. I do that to myself. So, and because I have actually, it's coffee, chores, and then I walk. I do my walk for the day and then I get ready. Um, and I, because that is worked in, after I get done doing all the things I need to do around my house, I know that I'm going to do my walk next. That's the next thing. And so I've been actually doing my walk because when I had my walk set to do at a certain time, if I was running behind, that was the first thing that was going out the window. I was like, no, we don't have time for the walk now. Like we missed that. We messed up. We got to remove that. So now that there's no times attached, I can do my walks and I have been doing my walks and I'm getting all kinds of little notifications on my watch congratulating me and giving me trophies and awards. Um, someone mentioned a check. No. Okay. Um, anyways, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I'm doing good. And I had told you guys that I was trying to get away from drinking the pops again because my stomach is not enjoying that. So that's going okay. Just finding that I, even though I, I will tell you, I've always been one of those kind of people that I can drink a cup of coffee and then immediately take a nap. Like I don't feel like caffeine has any real effect on me unless I have wildly way too much. And then I feel, you know, nauseous and anxious, but just normal amounts of caffeine. I don't feel like gives me energy. But it must do something because I have noticed that my my brain fog has been a little more active in the like mid to late afternoon when I would normally have like a Diet Dr. Pepper or something. So anyway, I just, I don't need to waste my money on that anyways. And apparently it's no good for my belly. Um... So that's going good. Was there anything else I want to tell you guys? Any more personal information that y'all don't even want to know that I'm just going to blab to you about anyways because, yeah, we're friends now. I get to tell you everything. Um, I think that's about it. So I have a uh, mini tutorial on crochet I-cord that I am posting up very soon. Um, I need to get that done for you guys. Um, I've had a couple people ask me. I had shown 
it's been, it was just a live impromptu video that I did last week. Um, and I had on a, basically it was a Ruana that I ended up closing the front of it up. So it was open, completely open on each side. And I love wearing it, but the thing is, is that I feel like it, it slides around shifts too much. So what I had done was I had crocheted some eye cord and I basically just come underneath each arm and I run the cord through and I tie it. So, um, and I like crocheted eye cord. I actually use it quite often um, for different shawls, wraps, things like that. Anything that I might want to secure together, but I don't necessarily want to seam up because I might want to adjust it or wear it a different way. So I can use the eye cord in the matching yarn and it's sturdy. It's far, far, far better than just like a crocheted chain. It is a true eye cord. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how I make my eye cord and it doesn't take very much yarn. It doesn't take very much time. And I bet you can find a whole bunch of uses for your eye cord. So you can tie your hair up in pigtails with it if you want. That'll be adorable, darling. Okay. I think that's all, guys. Um, be on the lookout for that next uh, iCord video. And I'm sure I'm going to come up with all kinds of other shenanigans before you know it. Thank you for visiting my channel today. If you've subscribed, I sure appreciate you and welcome back. And if you haven't subscribed yet, give it a shot. It's going to be awesome. We're all going to love it and be so happy. And I don't know. It's going to be good. It's going to be real good. I have a feeling about it. So you guys take care and I will see you next time. Bye.